Danica, it is such a pleasure to have you here with us today, and congratulations on being named a top 25 leading women entrepreneur. Um, so tell us, how, how did you get into this field of uh, medicine and a little bit on your history and backstory? So I always wanted to be a doctor. From the time I was 11 years old, I was diagnosed with scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, very common in pre-adolescent girls. And immediately, my brain just went to, well, this is going to help me be a better doctor. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I ever thought about being a doctor before that. But then that became my mission, and that became everything that I worked towards. By the time I was in college, uh, it was the late 70s, and all my friends were saying, oh, we need more women gynecologists. And that kind of just got into my head that I was not only going to be a doctor, but a gynecologist. Right. So what was it your plan to open up your own practice and be an entrepreneur, or how did you evolve into where you currently are? Great question. Uh, my plan was always to practice medicine pretty much in a traditional uh, group practice, uh, perhaps in affiliation with an academic health science center. Uh, but my back situation and my spinal situation got worse. Mm -hmm. um, so I wound up having to have very extensive surgeries and I couldn't be on my feet all day and operating. People forget how physically demanding being an OBGYN is. <laughs> There's right. a lot of lifting and bending. I, yes. Um, so when I got injured again, my surgeon said, I could operate on you every year or you could do something else. Mm -hmm. The only thing I knew doctors could do at that time if they couldn't practice was research or teaching. So I actually went to do clinical research at one of New Jersey's major pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. My plan was to stay there for a year, learn how to do clinical research, and then go back into an academic health science environment. But I loved it. And they kept giving me more and more intrapreneurial opportunities in the company. I started the medical education center. I, I supervised the medical publications department. I started a women's health focus within this company that never had a women's health focus before. And I became the corporate spokesperson on most media issues and medical issues related to most of um, their women's health issues. Now, when you're the spokesperson for a multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical company, you get a lot of media training. Mm -hmm. uh, and I loved it. And I really thrived on it. Meanwhile, they allowed me to continue rising through the ranks of organized medicine. I served on the boards of directors of the American Medical Women's Association, the Society for Women's Health Research, and ultimately became their spokesperson or spokes doctor as well. I finally got elected president of the American Medical Women's Association, and literally the next day, NBC called and said to the organization, do you have somebody who could come talk to us on the Weekend Today show about women's health issues? So I had the short straw. Um, the sitting president was a psychiatrist, so she didn't feel comfortable talking about medical problems. The interview went well. They called me every couple of weeks, and I would go back. And then NBC offered me a job as their on-air women's health contributor for a show called The Later Today Show, which Incredible. I said, is this a trick question? That's awesome. <laughs> so I took the job. Of course, I had to then resign from being a medical director of a pharmaceutical company to do that job. At that time, I had two children under two. The NBC job was literally a one day a week job. Mm -hmm. And of course, I needed something to do with the rest of my time. And that's when I got the idea to start my own company. And so there you have it. So it was all serendipity, but it was also influenced greatly right. by a phenomenal opportunity that came my way, but also the need to start thinking about how do I balance work and family. Right, and how to control your own destiny. And, and my own time. And your time, exactly. As a mom, I totally, <laughs> I think we all understand how important that is and to create a life where you can do be a part of your family. The best thing that I read at that time uh, it was somebody saying that when you start your own company, it feels like you're jumping off a cliff, but it turns out you jumped off the curb. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a little bit scary in the beginning, but it's exciting, and you're fitting all the pieces together. It's working, and I put together a very gratifying, satisfying, influential career. Well, congratulations on your Thank success. You. So your favorite part of your job currently and this life that you've created? My favorite part of the career that I've created is it allows me to do well by doing good. Mm -hmm. Everything that I do has to have something to do with why I became a doctor in the first place, which is really helping people live the best lives and the best health that they possibly can. 
Absolutely. Now, is there someone who continues or something that continues to inspire you to strive for more? <sighs> My inspiration comes from many different sources. Um, certainly, the biggest source is just this very internalized motivation I have uh, to be a doctor, which means actually being do- the word doctor means teacher. Um, to educate people about their health, to translate very confusing, scary medical information into language we can all understand. And I'm inspired by every single woman who has contacted me afterwards and said, I heard you on this television show and I had these symptoms and as a result I went to my doctor and as a result I was diagnosed with XYZ problem very early and it was taken care of and now I've done this, this, this and this in my life. And whether that's people in my social sphere or people in my business sphere or people who come up to me after a lecture that I give, it's very empowering, motivating, and inspiring to me. Well, you've had a major impact on a lot of different lives. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you. Being the change is our theme for the event this year. How do you envision yourself being the change? I've always seen myself as a change agent. I've always seen myself as the person who raises her hand and says the emperor is not wearing any clothes here. Or in medical school, every time we would learn about something, it was of course based on the 175 white male model. And I was always the one who would say, but how does this affect women? Or how is this condition affected by estrogen? Or how is this condition affected by birth control pills? Which are taken by 25% of all women of reproductive age, and yet we don't really study how birth control pills interact with most other medications. I was very involved um, in 1990 with a group of women who were motivated by the 11 women in Congress at the time Mm -hmm. who demanded um, that NIH start doing clinical trials on women as well as men. And we formed the Society for Women's Health Research as a result of that. So I've always seemed to be, my friends call me the Forrest Gump of medicine. I seem to always be or often be in a position where I'm interacting with other people who are making the change. Right. And what I do is talk about it, communicate it, um, ask really good questions that get other people to say, okay, maybe I need to modify this somehow. Love it. Well, mm-hmm. you have helped a lot of people with your mm-hmm. with your very profound and impactful work, and we're so thrilled to have you as uh, top 25 this year and can't wait to celebrate you on November 16th is it this year at the Liberty House <laughs> thank so you congratulations and again. thank you for including me in this wonderful and distinguished group my pleasure